This is our uh, another episode of Freedom Cafe live from Awesome Con. We're here with the great writer, great guy, David Walker. David Walker. Yep. Hello. How's Hello. everybody doing? Yep. Hi. And um, first thing, I just want to know, like, what? How did you get? What inspired you to start writing and to just keep writing? You know, what were you? You know. Oh man, I was inspired to write when I was a little kid. I, I watched a lot of TV, read a lot of comic books, and was just always making up my own stories. So um, it, it is as, as early as I was learning how to write, just write basic sentences, you know, the dog ran down the street. And then I was like, the dog ran down the street and bit the mailman. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it was yeah. like, I, I was, it was very, first grade, I started writing my own stories. Yeah. And, and when did you like, uh, what was your first comic that you, you know, that, that, that you read and that made you want to say like, oh, that is what I want to do? Um, you, know. you know, the first comic that I read, I, I it, there's an issue of Batman that my mom bought me. When I was a kid growing up, there was the, the, the Batman TV show was in syndication yeah. with Adam West. Yep. And, um, so I was really into the character. My mom bought me a comic book, you know, for the life of me. I can't remember the exact number, um, but it was, you know, Batman, whatever, whatever. It came out in like 1971, 72, something like that. And that was, that was the beginning. That was, I, I other kids were learning how to read Dr. Seuss books. Yeah. And I was learning with, with comic books. That is cool. And um, could you tell us more about Bitterroot and the Naomi? Okay, well, yeah. uh, Bitterroot is a uh, image creator own series that I co write with Chuck Brown. Sanford Green is the artist on it. It's about a, a family of monster hunters yeah. during the Harlem Renaissance, and the, the family is sort of split. Some think you should cure monsters, others think you should kill them. And the key is that monsters are, are human beings who've been infected by hate and racism, and, and so it's a uh, Part of it's a family drama. There's a lot of action, supernatural element to it. We just wrapped up the first arc. Trade paperback comes out in May 2019. Second arc will start later in the fall. And the annual's coming out. The annual's yes, coming out the summer, the Red Summer Annual. Yeah. Those that don't know what the Red Summer is, either should look up Red Summer 1919 yep. or should just buy the comic and yeah, find buy, out. Definitely buy the comic. Um, and, uh, so the Red Summer Annual is coming out uh, summer of 1919 or 2019, um, and uh, and then Naomi is a is a title that I'm co-writing over at DC with with my friend Brian Bendis, and that is about a young woman, uh, she's adopted, yep. and she's trying to figure out the mystery of of who her birth parents were, and she's also obsessed with Superman yep. because Superman is also adopted, you know, and um, and she starts to realize oh, wait a sec, there's a mystery behind yep. who I am, and oh, I don't want to spoil it, but by the time we get to issue six, we will have changed the entire DC universe. Yeah. So it's, it's so amazing, like, because I was reading it, and I was like, at first when I, was, when I first started reading it, I was like, okay, this guy, the big guy, I can't yeah. remember, was, I thought D. that was D, I thought D was the father at first, because he was just like, no, no, this is not a good time, this is not a good time. I was just like, oh, man. I yep. understand, and um, then, then when that that was like a total surprise. Yeah, yeah. When uh, when when they took her to, you know, I don't want to yeah, spoil yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. But definitely check it out. <laughs> it's hot and it's amazing. It's funny too, and it's over. And, and there were points in it where that, you know, I'm not adopted, but I could yeah. relate to it. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. That was, that was well. We all relate to wanting to know more about where we came from yes. at some point, even if we're not adopted. Yeah. Um, you know, Brian has two daughters who are adopted. Um, so they have questions about where they came from. But, you know, for myself, my dad died when I was, I, I wasn't even two years old yet. So I don't even have memories of my dad. So I have those mysteries, right? Yeah, and at some yeah. point, we, most of us wonder about, you know, where did my folks come from? Especially now we see all these ads for Ancestry.com and 23andMe. And yep. it's like, ultimately, if you don't know where you came from, there's sort of a, a feeling of being incomplete. Yep, I so. agree. I totally agree. I was, you know, I was fortunate enough to have my dad and he had the whole lineage, but it's yeah. on my mom's side. It's like, they're from Guyana, but they're from also like India, yeah. India and China. It was crazy. A lot of question marks, man. Yeah, a lot, lot of yeah. question marks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And what, uh, like being a, 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 black, a black writer, 
how hard was it for you to uh, get into Marvel or just to be where you are now? Did you, it was like, was it always a fight or, was, you know? It was always a fight, always. but I, I, I think it's, you know, part of it is um, there's a fight and it's difficult to get in no matter who you are. There's, yeah. Yeah. It's, there, there's, there's more openings every year in the NFL yeah. than there are in mainstream comics. There's wow. just so many, there's only so many positions open. Yeah. So you got to fight and you got to struggle and, and, you know, things like race and gender can can play a role in it because a lot of times people only go with what they know, with what they're familiar with. They think, oh, they see a woman writer, they think only a woman writer can write female characters. Yeah, that's, that's not the case. They think definitely. only a black writer can write black characters. That's not the case. So so you're having to prove yourself as being capable um, and, and, and that's not always an easy thing to do. So it, it was, you know, for me, I started out self-publishing my own stuff because when I was trying to get work, just as even as a writer, as a journalist, yeah. no one was hiring me. So I'll just create my own stuff. Yeah. Then I created my own stuff and then people started hiring me. So the same way in comics to a large extent. So, so always keep creating. Yeah, always keep creating. Always if, you, if, you're, if you're doing it to get a paycheck, that, that means, it, it ain't gonna work out for you. You right. know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. you have to create your own opportunities. And, and, and that's the thing. It, it, it's, if, if, Marvel does, if you really want to write comics but Marvel isn't hiring you, yeah. then what, you, you're gonna give up on your dreams? Nope. Now if your right. dream is just, I always tell people, if, if you want to write comics, and you have the, but the only story you have in mind is the greatest Aqualad story ever told, then you ain't got what it takes to be a comic book writer. Sure. Because if all you want to do is write about Aqualad, but I'm sorry, it ain't yeah. going to work out for you, you yeah. know? So um, it, a lot of it has to do with just, it, is really expanding your interest, expanding what you write about, all those sort of things. So, yeah. yeah. Well, well, this has been a great interview. Oh, well, thank De you. Definitely <laughs> buy Bitterroot, buy Naomi, buy everything that you see here. <laughs> don't, don't just limit it to that. We'll have all his information in the link below to his Instagram, Twitter. And if you ever get to go to a, a Comic-Con where he's at, go. Because this interview was great. <laughs> you, know, I, you know, thank you, thank you very no, much. No, thank you. You know, this, yeah. is, this is my first convention here in Washington, D.C. Awesome Con's been a great show. A lot of great people. I'm having a good time. So I'm just glad I was able to be here. And, and uh, yeah, you know, and, and, and I'm going to plug something real quick. Okay. My Frederick Douglass book. Frederick, yes. That's the one. This is it. If you read it, you'll be smarter. Okay. You can, you can, you can, you can probably do a college thesis I'm on Frederick Douglass. I'm going to buy that right now. <laughs> so, Look at yes. that. I made a sale. <laughs> one sale and many more sales in the future. This has been a great uh, interview. Uh, thank you for tuning in to Freedom Cafe, Awesome Con 2019 edition.